Welcome back. The objectives of this video are to review standard positions of angles, take a look at radian measure, convert between radian and degrees, and explore complementary and supplementary angles. In our first objective, we're going to take a look at standard position. And standard position of an angle is said to be the position on the coordinate plane when the initial side of the angle lies on the positive x-axis. And from there, angles can rotate clockwise or counterclockwise from this standard position. So this is my initial side. And let's say I have an angle that opens up into the second quadrant here. And I can show the direction of the angle. That angle is in standard position and it opens in the positive direction because we are rotating counterclockwise. Similarly, an angle can rotate in the negative direction and it rotates clockwise. And these two angles are both coterminal, they have the same terminating side or terminal side. So if my positive angle here was say 135 degrees, my negative angle then is opening up negative 225 degrees and those two angles are considered to be co-terminal. Degree measure, we can measure angles in degrees, we can also measure them in radians. And the difference between degrees and radians is a little bit like um, measuring temperature. We can measure temperature in Fahrenheit, we can also measure it in Celsius. So we can measure the magnitude of an angle in degrees or we can measure it in radians. Degrees, a measure of one degree is equivalent to a rotation of one three hundred and sixtieth of a complete revolution around the vertex. We can sometimes measure our angles in decimal form. You might get an angle that's uh, 72.4 degrees. Or we can measure our angles in degrees, minutes, and seconds. This is just a measure of uh, more precision. Minutes, there are 60 minutes make up one degree, or a minute is 1 60th of a degree. And there are 60 seconds in one minute, or a second is 1 360th of a degree. So you might Actually, see an 1 angle 36 that's measured at 42 degrees, 36 minutes, and 24 seconds. And we use these hash marks to denote minutes and seconds. Radian measure, on the other hand, is determined by the amount of rotation required, or the central angle, so that the arc length is equal to the radius, and that determines one radian. If we're on the coordinate plane here and we have a, a radius of a circle, our circle might go something like this. Our arc length, we'll call it S, that distance say from the positive x-axis to where it hits is equal to our radius. So our radius equals our arc length. That amount that's needed to open that angle is considered one radian. As it turns out, one full revolution all the way around is equal to two pi radians. So 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. So 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. Angles in our first quadrant, our theta here, has got to be between 0 and 90 degrees, or in radians, if 180 degrees is pi radians and 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. 90 degrees must be 
pi radians. So our in quadrant one, our theta, our angle has got to be less than pi over two. I beg your pardon, 90 degrees is pi over two radians. And it's got to be greater than zero. In our second quadrant, our angle theta has got to be less than pi, but it also has to be greater than pi over 2. Then we know if our radians is between pi over 2 and pi, we're in the second quadrant. Similarly, in the third quadrant, our theta has got to be less than, well, 270 degrees must be 3 pi over 2. Has got to be less than 3 pi over 2, but greater than pi. And then if we're in our fourth quadrant, our angle theta has got to be less than 2 pi, but greater than 3 pi over 2. And if we're exactly at pi over 2, or pi, or 3 pi over 2, or 2 pi, then we're right on either the y or the x axis. So that's why we don't have equivalencies in any of those, because the quadrantals aren't in, quadrantal angles are not in any of the quadrants. Objective three, we're looking to convert between degrees and radians, and recall that 100 degrees is pi radians. So 180 if we degrees want is pi radians. To convert from degrees to radians, think about your train tracks or your your unit analysis. If we want radians in the numerator, we want radians. Well, we divide by 180, and then 1 degree equals pi over 180. We want to convert 135 degrees to radians. We simply take our 135 degrees, we multiply by pi over 180 degrees. So you can see here our unit analysis, I have degrees in the numerator, degrees in the denominator, my degrees are going to cancel. So I am successfully going to convert to radians, and 135 and simplifies with 180, and I am simply left with 3 pi over 4 radians. So if we have pi in there, then we know we're in radian measure. Conversely, if we want to convert from radians to degrees, we want to make sure we have degrees in the numerator. We will go ahead, we'll convert 2 pi over 3, and now we are going to multiply by 180 over pi, because 1 radian is 180 over pi, as we saw here. Okay, 1 radian is equal to 180 degrees over pi. So 2 pi over 3, our pi's cancel this time. Uh, 180 over 3 is 60. So I end up with 2 times 60, or 120 degrees, because my degrees don't cancel in my unit analysis. We've got some samples of coterminal angles. We want to determine one positive and one negative angle coterminal to the following angles coterminal to 300 degrees. If you want, you can use your coordinate plane over here. But if we want something to be coterminal to 300 degrees, well, if we add 360, which is simply just another revolution, then we get 660 degrees is going to be coterminal to 300. And if we subtract 360 degrees, then we get negative 60 degrees. That is also going to be coterminal because now we're just doing another revolution but in the other direction. So a 300 degree angle is going to end up a little bit into the fourth quadrant here. So that angle might be positive 300. So an ang a negative angle coterminal to that is just going to be negative 60. But if I want to get another positive one that's coterminal, I have to continue another whole revolution and finish up here. So I've added 360. So those angles are coterminal. 
For negative 225, I can add 360. What's going to be coterminal with that? But 135, I'm going to end up in the second quadrant. Negative angle, negative 225. So now I'm going to go in the negative direction, an entire revolution, and get negative 585. And we can do the same thing with radian measure. We've got 13 pi over 6. So 13 pi over 6, well, if we, but a full revolution is going to be 2 pi radians. And so 13 pi over 6 is going to be the equivalent if I subtract 12 pi over 6 is the same as pi over 6. So now to find the negative one, we have to do pi over 6 minus 12 pi over 6 or minus 2 pi because 2 pi is a full revolution and we get 11 pi over 6. I beg your pardon, negative 11 pi over 6. And now we have an angle that's negative 2 pi over 3 and we need an angle that's positive. So I'm just going to add 6 pi over 3. So that will give me a positive 4 pi over 3. And then for my negative angle, negative 2 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3 gives me a negative 8 pi over, oops, over 3. And then finally, find the complement and the supplement. So we want to find the complement uh, or the supplement of 2 pi over 5. Complements must add to 90 degrees, but in radi radian measure, we must add to pi over 2. And the supplement, they must add to 180, or in radian measure, they must equal pi. To find the complement of 2 pi over 5, let's, five, let's find that first. So we'll let x equal the complement, 2 pi over 5, plus some value x must equal pi over 2, 5 pi over 10. Common denominator here, 4 pi over 10, plus x equals 5 pi over 10. So we need the complement is just going to be x is equal to pi over 10. If we want the supplement, 2 pi over 5, We'll call it y. y is going to be our supplement here. Plus y must equal pi, or let's call it 5 pi over 5. We subtract 2 pi over 5 from both sides, and we get 3 pi over 5 equals y. So that is our supplement. In B, we want to find the complement of 4 pi over 5. If 90 degrees was 5 pi over 10, this is the equivalent of 8 pi over 10, isn't it? And don't we know 90 degrees is pi over 2 or 5 pi over 10? So 8 pi over 10 is greater, so this angle is greater than 90 degrees. There's going to be no complement. 4 pi over 5 is greater than pi over 2, or 90. So to find the supplement, that's going to be pretty easy for us. 4 pi over 5 plus the supplement of 4 pi over 5 has to equal pi, or 5 pi over 5. So that's just going to be pi over 5 is equal to our supplement. So there's a little introduction to trigonometry. We're taking a look at radian and degree measure, standard position of angles, coterminal angles, and we've taken a look at complementary and supplementary angles. And we'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.